In this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 amazing fragrances for the cold in winter that you definitely do not wanna miss out on. If you haven't tried these ones, at least just give them a sample because if you didn't, you would be missing out. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about mostly designer fragrances to make it a little bit more affordable for everyone, one niche slash independent fragrance and one cheapy kind of clone twist, so mostly designer. Now in this video, I could only talk about 10 and I know there's a lot of amazing cold weather in winter fragrances out there, so please let me know in the comments below what your favorite favorite ones are. While you do that, let me get into this list. In this list, I'm going to try to talk about fragrances that I don't normally talk about. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about a fragrance that I always talk about on this channel and I think deserves a lot more hype and love. That's Hugo Boss Bottled <laughs> Elixir. And I think that this fragrance is absolutely amazing. It was one of my, actually, it was my favorite release of 2023. I think it was the best release and it actually was by quite a bit. I think that this is the highest quality designer fragrance, at least in terms of scent profile and ingredients that I've smelt in a long, time. Not only that, it's actually long lasting. It smells rather unique for a designer fragrance. It kind of smells like a sweet root beer with some incense added in there. You get some of that sweetness from what smells like vanilla cardamom combination. It goes together super nice. This is a classy scent profile that I must be honest with you is a little bit occasional in the fact that it just smells super high class. Kind of has like an old school masculine vibe to it with some modern day touches and sweetness, kind of like Dior Sauvage Elixir, but anyone is telling you this isn't a good fragrance. Fragrance. I mean, well, they could because it's their opinion, but I just love this one. Definitely check that one out. The next fragrance is one that's of no surprise to a lot of people. Givenchy Gentleman Reserve Privé. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's super classy and high quality smelling. Honestly, I think that this is probably one of the best designer fragrances ever. You're getting notes of like iris, chestnut. You're also getting a warm vanillic undertone with some whiskey added in there. It's perfumed by some amazing perfumers. It actually lasts quite a long time on Skin. This is also compared to Dior Homme Intense because it does have kind of a similar smelling iris note in there, but there's a little bit more depth and a little bit more character in this that I gotta say is, in my opinion, a better fragrance than Dior Homme Intense. I think that they're both amazing fragrances, but in my opinion, this one clears. And if you haven't tried this one already, you're definitely missing out. Probably also one of the best Givenchy Gentleman fragrances. Look into it if you haven't. The next one on the list, I wanna tell you about an amazingly underrated fragrance that isn't on a lot of people's radars. This is Burberry Hero Eau de Parfum. I think that it's not on a lot of people's radars because the EDT that came out, in my opinion, was so underwhelming and I think that the community agreed. It was just not a good fragrance, in my opinion. Kind of like a fresh, woody fragrance with not a lot of character to it. Like, I just genuinely did not like it. Then they come out with this fragrance and it is such an improvement in a very, very good step in the right direction. Basically, this is a woody, ambery, incense -y fragrance. You get three types of cedars, sweetness from the amber, and then this warm incense that joins together. It's not the most unique smelling fragrance, but I think that it smells amazing. It has pulled me a couple compliments and I don't know why no one talks about it. It's such a magnetic scent profile and hey, did I mention it has a magnetic cap? Check that out. Good presentation, very good fragrance and some decent performance out of it too. Oh, my, does this ever deserve more hype? Okay, this next one on the list, I gotta give a little bit of disclosure. It was sent to me by the brand, but obviously you guys know me, I would never mention a fragrance in this video if I was getting paid to promote it because that's the last thing I'd ever wanna do to my credibility. But this fragrance is by Theodoros Kalatini's Tobacco Maniac. This fragrance is underrated because the brand isn't very known in, I guess, Western countries, but it is a well-received fragrance, highly rated. A lot of people that get this love it. This is probably, from what I've smelt so far, my favorite in the entire collection. This is a sweet tobacco scent. You're getting two types of tobacco, tobacco leaf and tobacco. So what that does is it kind of combines together to give this unlit cigar type of smell. Picture the tobacco leaf wrapping around the tobacco. Then you're getting this warm sweetness from that honey and vanilla. I think that is super high class. I know a lot of people that love this fragrance that are in the community, but not a lot of people give this brand and or this fragrance any hype, although it's very well received. And when you smell it, you know, definitely sample before you buy because it is expensive. No, I'm not going to shill an affiliate code and I don't have a discount for you, but definitely look into sampling it. The next one on the list, absolute hype beast monster, but I think that it is definitely deserves that hype. That is 1 million elixir, another elixir flanker, but this will be the last one on the list because I just didn't want to include all the elixir fragrances that I always talk about. But I must tell you, honestly, if you have smelt Zerjoff Herbapura, I was actually very, very shocked to see how close 
most of these fragrances get, especially in the dry down. The scent profile you're getting is kind of like fruity, floral, with a little bit of vanillic and tonka undertones that kind of come out in a very powerful way. One Million Elixir is a very, very long lasting fragrance. You're talking 12 hours. It's not a room filler in terms of its projection, but the performance is amazing. It doesn't smell anything like the other One Million Flankers. In my opinion, this is more of a unisex fragrance, but like I said, these two are scaringly similar. Like, I don't know why no one really talks about that, but then again, I think this is the more refined version. This is a very sexy, like seductive fragrance that is very playful and flirtatious, but at the same time, will grab attention from women and men. And women totally can get away with this fragrance. You can definitely try this one and wear this one as well. It's not just for the men out there. This next one on the list, I had to mention this fragrance because I've actually worn this fragrance a lot recently because I just love it. That's Le Toffa Hamra Kawa. It smells super high quality, especially for the price. This is like less than $50 Canadian. If you guys know Le Toffa Hamra, this is a basically flanker of that. And Le Toffa Hamra is a twist on Angel Share, which is a very high quality, boozy, sweet fragrance. You're getting everything that you would get out of the original fragrance, except you're getting a more dark sweetness in here, supported by this nice coffee note that gives it this seductive sweetness, something that you would picture on a date night or something that you're trying to intoxicate someone with when you're wearing it. That's, in my opinion, is far enough away from the Angel Share DNA that if you were to have Angel Share and you also own this, I don't think that there's too much of a problem. It's not too redundant because of that added coffee and dark sweetness. You're also getting this dark chocolatey pralines note and some vanilla in here with some warm spicy undertones. This smells way more expensive than you're getting it for. Latafa fragrances get a lot of hype. I think it's my favorite current fragrance from Latafa that I've tried. So look into it. I think it's a more refined, better take on the OG Latafa Hamra. Okay, this next fragrance is probably the highest rating I've ever given to a designer fragrance on this channel. That is Azaro the Most Wanted Parfum. There's something in this fragrance that is just the definition of addictive. It is by far my favorite flanker of the Wanted DNA from Azaro. It clears everything in that whole line. Probably the longest lasting in the entire line as well. So you're getting things like this kind of clean ginger that shines through this boozy vanillic sweetness and a little bit of a backdrop of these warm woods. Some people have said that this kind of has like a grape soda type of smell to it, I guess. This is a fragrance that I just go to, pull the cap and start smelling, even if I don't want to wear it for that day because it's just such an addictive scent profile. Everyone has that designer fragrance that just does it for them, even though it's not like the best high quality scent profile. There's always that fragrance that everyone just goes to. So far, I mean, I haven't found anything that beats it in terms of its addictive scent profile, incredible wearing experience because I just love the smell of this on me and others have given me such amazing feedback with this. So it's just an added benefit, I guess you could say. If you have not tried out Azaro the Most Wanted Parfum, do it, please. You probably will love it. Okay, this next one, I have absolutely loved wearing this. I just wore it recently to a steakhouse when I was dressed nice. This is Bulgari Man in Black. This is absolutely not an unknown fragrance. <laughs> this one gets a lot of love in the community, a lot of hype, and for very good reason, actually. You could kind of relate this to any sort of spice bomb flanker, but it does its own classy, unique thing. So what you get with this fragrance is spicy rum, tobacco, leather, iris. Everything just goes together so nice. This fragrance is incredibly well blended, smells super high class. If you slap this in a niche bottle and then just like upped the price by double, I'm sure people wouldn't have really even noticed because it does smell kind of a league above designer fragrances in my opinion. And by the way, there's a flanker coming out to this this year, I believe. So I will be buying that right away. I wanted to make sure I talked about this because if we're talking about fragrances I enjoy in the cold weather, oh, this is a chart topper for me. This is like a classy, rich boss type of scent. Such a commanding scent profile, super masculine, super charismatic. It really just adds to the character of a man. So this next fragrance on the list is definitely also not unfamiliar to the hyped category. That is by YSL and it is La Nuit de l'Homme Bleu Electrique. This is basically giving all that power back of the original formulation of La Nuit de l'Homme. So you're getting like this kind of seductive, warm, spicy sweetness from cardamom, clean lavender and ginger coming through there. I think there's like bergamot in here, which gives it this brightness to the opening. When I smelt a modern formulation of the original La Nuit de l'Homme, I was very disappointed because the performance was not that good. This fixes that issue and in fact amps that scent profile up. Probably might just sell my OG because this just does everything that the OG does and more in such a better way. This is like a sexy date night king. You will definitely be detected and probably complimented if you go on a date night with this thing. I think a lot of people are just going to want to come in close and smell your neck if you put this on. Okay, so the last fragrance I want to talk to you about today is a fragrance that actually 
actually came out just last year and I think deserves a lot more love, a lot more attention and more hype. You know what? Actually, let's just gatekeep this fragrance. This is Hugo Boss The Scent Magnetic. What an incredible release from Hugo Boss. Hugo Boss has been just releasing banger after banger recently and this is no exception to that. So with this fragrance, you're getting a nice unique brand note, which kind of gives this like weedy oat type of undertone, but it goes together so nicely with this black vanilla husk and maninka fruit. It joins together to kind of give this almost borderline gourmand scent profile. What the maninka fruit in here does is it gives kind of a tropical fruity sweetness with a little bit of a spicy edge. That black vanilla husk comes in here and kind of gives this dark, almost smoky like vanilla smell to it. And that brand just kind of grounds it down. I really, really like the scent profile to this. It's masculine, but also seductively sweet and classy. There's a lot going on here that makes it smell a lot more expensive than it is and a lot more unique than you would think. And if you don't believe me, check out my full review to see if it's right for you. So that's all the fragrances I wanted to feature in this video. I'm going to make sure at one point I have reviews to all these. I'll just list the ones that I already do have reviews for in the description. Winter and cold weather are my favorite times to bust out my amazing fragrances. So that's why I was very excited to talk to you about this. Subscribe to the channel if you liked this content and definitely check out this video right here, which I know you will love if you like this video. Thanks for watching so much and I'll see you over there.